Hi, welcome to my video on the Maria study. Excuse me. Maria is part of the cognitive psychology studies that we do for A level. Um, so as part of cognitive psychology, you should have already studied Loftus and Palmer and Grant, and then and in the first year, and then in the second year, you'll be studying Murray and Simons and Chabris. Uh, Loftus and Palmer and Grant are both about memory, and Simons and Chabris and Murray are both about attention. And they're cognitive because cognitive psychology believes that all our behaviour is affected by the way that we think or perceive a certain situation, and that in turn affects our behaviour. Um, so specifically, Murray is about attention and how that impacts on your behaviour, so what you notice about the world around you. Okay, so the Murray study was done in 1959 and it's about attention in dichotic listening. So some background behind the Murray study. Uh, Broadbent in 1958 thought that the world um, is composed of so many different things going on. If you think about our five senses, we've got sight, smell, taste, touch, um, and we've got to process all that information. And that's, there's quite a lot, because you know, some people can get sensory overload from trying to process the sheer amount of information that we have and see in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, and so Broadbent thought that we can only handle so much of this information. So we actually ignore a lot of the stuff that's going on around us and actually only focus on the important, um, the salient events really that are happening. Um, because otherwise we just simply can't, um, What's the, um, we can digest all that information. So there are two main ways of studying attention. The first is called selective attention. And this is when you get played two messages simultaneously. Um, and then participants are instructed only to listen to one of those. So for example, with my arms around. So for example, you might get um, a message to your left ear and your right ear at the same time, but you might be told, or oh, just listen to your left ear or just listen to your right ear. Um, and the other is divided attention and this is where you um, have two messages played simultaneously but you're asked to respond to both messages and you're asked to um, be listening to both at the same time which is really difficult for us to do. Um, one of the ways that we can test participants on this is by shadowing and shadowing is when you listen to something and then you repeat back what's being said. Um, so in the divided attention task, the dual technique, you might be told, listen to your left ear and your right ear and try and shadow both of those, okay? Murray uses um, selective attention and this is where you listen to two messages at the same time, but you are only asked to be paying attention to one. So they might say, listen to your left ear and shadow that, okay? Um, the other background to the study is uh, by a psychologist called Cherry. Um, in 1953, he came up with the cocktail party phenomenon, um, which is where you are fo your attention is focused on the people who you are speaking with. Um, however, if somebody says your name in this party, your attention will be immediately diverted and you immediately be like, what? Who said that? Okay, um, and that's regardless of what's going on, what's being said at the time. And that's one of the only ways that our attention is um, diverted. Um, Cherry also found that if people are played two simultaneous messages, um, they actually ignore the content of the other ear. So if you listen to the left ear, they actually ignore what's going on in the right ear. And Maria wanted to test this. He wanted to test whether people could actually listen to two messages at the same time or be shadowing one message and still take in the information that's going in through the other ear. Um, his experiments two and three are to test other things that affect attention. Specifically in experiment two, it's to test Cherry's cocktail party phenomenon about the names. So if you say a participant's name, does that divert their attention? And then in experiment three, it's about numbers. So with a playing numbers, whilst shadowing a message, does that divert their attention? Okay. 
So the research method that Murray uses, they're all lab experiments, all really controlled, um, but they've all got slightly different designs. Um, the way that he did all of the studies was he had a tape recorder with headphones and these headphones, normally if you listen to music or you're watching something uh, on your phone or a video or something and you've got headphones in, you will hear the information through both earpieces. Um, in the case of Murray's study, his headphones are set up um, with different outputs. Um, so in which case you would have two different um, pieces of information happening at the same time. So for example, if you're listening to music um, in one ear, you might be watching a YouTube video in the other ear. Okay. Um, one way to standardise the um, volume of the messages, because the participants have played two different messages in each ear, to make sure that one of them isn't uh, being listened, paid more attention to because it's louder, the participants were actually asked to listen to the messages and then to say when they were at a similar volume. Um, and this is to standardise the volume of the messages. Okay, it's not very scientific, um, quite subjective because it was all down to the participants. There was no objective of this many decibels or anything like that. Okay, but it was one control that they had in place. So I'm going to talk you through Marais three different experiments, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain the experiment and then the results at the same time, rather than going through all of three experiments and then all three results. I find it's easier to um, process the information if you keep it separate into experiments one, two, and three. So we'll start with experiment number one. Um, this experiment uh, is a traditional shadowing experiment and it's the one to test cocktail, uh, Cherry's um, theory that we can only process one piece of information at once. Um, in this experiment, the sample's not known. We don't know how many people, Murray doesn't tell us how many people took part um, in this study. It's a repeated measures design. All the participants take part in all of the conditions. Um, the two IVs are the psychotic listening test um, and the recognition test. And then the DV is the number of words recalled in the rejected message, which is the word list. Um, the rejected message is the one that the participants aren't supposed to be listening to. So, for example, they might have in their left ear, they might have um, a passage from a book, let's say Alice in Wonderland. That's an example. Um, again, Murray doesn't give us details of what the, uh, the participants were read out uh, in his study. So we'll use Alice in Wonderland as an example. But please don't repeat that in your exams. So in the left ear, let's say it's Alice in Wonderland, and in the right ear, let's say it's the word list. Participants are told, now listen to your left ear, and they're listening to the Alice in Wonderland passage, and they're, they're repeating it, they're shadowing it. Um, the rejected message would be the word list that's played in their right ear, and that's the one that's not supposed to be listening to, and therefore it's the rejected message. Okay? So the way that the study is done is that they have the word list repeated 35 times in total, uh, whilst the prose passage is read out. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, they've got to shadow that passage, so they've got to uh, repeat what um, is being read out to them. Okay. Once they do this, they're asked to report all they can remember from the rejected message, i.e. the word list. Okay. And then they're given a recognition test, which was neither the word list nor the prose message. Um, and this is to test their attention basically um, and none of the words in that recognition test are in either the prose or the word list okay and this is just to control just to test what they can and can't remember okay so the results of experiment number one for the prose message again for an example let's say Alice in Wonderland they can remember a mean of 4.9 out of seven words so that's quite high Good 80%. Yeah. Um, from the rejected message, which is the word list, which is the one they're not supposed to be listening to, they could remember a mean of 1.9 um, words out of seven. Um, and then from the recognition test, now remember this is a control, and none of the words in the recognition test are in either the prose message or the word list, they actually remember 2.6. 
which is 0.7 more than the word list. So they actually remembered more words that weren't in either the prose or the word list. So it's fairly safe to say that the participants are guessing here with the word list messages. We, and that supports Cherry's theory that we can only listen to one thing at once. So if you're watching TV and your mum's talking to you and your mum says, oh, you're not listening to me. And you're like, yeah, 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 I am. I'm listening, I promise. You're not listening. You can only do one thing at once. Okay? So that supports Cherry's theory. Um, moving on to experiment number two. So we, Maria wanted to test to see if there are other things that affect our attention, um, not just listening to one thing or another. So second experiment, he wanted to test the limits of our attentional block, and this is how much we can pay attention to. In this experiment, there were 12 participants, and it, again, we're given no information on these participants, who they are, how old they are, male or female, or anything like that. Okay, we just know that there's 12 of them. I'm assuming, done in the 1950s, they're probably all going to be male. Um, so what they're asked to do is they're asked to shadow 10 passages of fiction, um, and that's where they have to listen to the passage, and then they have to repeat it back. Um, they're given a variety of instructions like, now listen to your right ear. All right, you may stop now. And John Smith, you may stop now. And these are inputted into the prose message totally at random. And there's various different instructions that they're given, um, which I'll put on the screen to show you. Um, they're told that the object of the experiment is to make as few mistakes as possible, uh, but they're not told the purpose, i.e. that it's about tension. Um, when it comes to the instructions, 50% of these instructions had their name at the beginning. So, for example, it would say, Amy, now listen to your right ear. Amy, now listen to your left ear. Um, and the other 50% would just say, now listen to your right ear, or you may stop now. Okay? Um, and this is to test Cherry's cocktail party phenomenon, that if we say your name, immediately your attention is going to be diverted elsewhere. The uh, shadowed passages, so the, the pieces of fiction, are read in a, mon a monotone voice at 130 words per minute. And this is just to try and standardise the experiment a little bit, to just make sure that we are testing the IV um, of this, um, the name calling, and that that's diverting our attention and that they're not getting distracted by the way that the story is being read out or how fast it's being read or anything like that. Okay. Um, the results of experiment number two, um, the instructions presented by name were followed 20 out of 39 times. It's quite high, quite a few times. In the non-effective, which is the no name, so if they've just said now listen to your left ear and now listen to your right ear, in the non-effective, they only paid attention to the instructions four out of 36 times. So quite a big difference there. So 20 when they're presented by name, and only four when they don't present by name. And that's significant at 1%. Um, so don't forget that we set our significance levels at, at least 5%. Um, and that ensures that our results, we're 95% sure that our results haven't happened by chance. There's a 5% leeway um, that it has happened by chance. And the smaller this 5% is, the more likely it is that is what we've done. So 1% for Maria's study for this experiment number two is really high, very highly significant. That means we're 99% sure that it's because of what we've done, i.e. calling, calling their attention by name. And it's not something, um, something else that's causing their attention to be diverted. So 1% significance is, is really good. Okay. Um, then the last experiment is experiment number three. Uh, in experiment number three, we had two groups of 14 participants, so 28 participants in total. And this time it's an independent measures design. Experiments number one and experiments number two are repeated measures. Um, all the participants take part in every condition. In this case, it's an independent measures design. Okay. Um, in, similarly to the other experiments, they shadow two simultaneous psychotic messages um, and numbers are randomly inserted into the end of the message. Um, group number one, or group A, are told that they will be asked about 
the shadowed passage, so the one that they're repeating. Uh, and the other group are told to remember as many numbers as possible. But again, they're not told what the experiment is about. Okay, um, the results for experiment number three, a t-test was done and the results were not significant, not even at 5%. Okay, so there's no, uh, there's no link between putting numbers in and it, in it diverting people's attention. People just ignore it and they carry on listening to the instructions of now listen to this ear, now listen to that ear. Totally ignore the numbers um, within the passages. So, Murray came to the conclusion that where participants direct attention to a message from one ear and reject a message from the other ear, none of the rejected message is paid attention to. So, if you are asked, okay, now listen to your left ear, shadow that message, you will totally ignore everything that's coming into that right ear. And that means that we can only pay attention to one thing at once. So, your mum's right. When she's asking you to listen to her, it's because we can only do one thing at once. Um, even a short word list repeated many times over has no, it just does not go in, just does not filter it, that attention block. We are focused on that one particular thing, it doesn't matter what else is going on, no matter how many times it's repeated. Um, and important messages, i.e. somebody's name, can penetrate the attentional block. Um, and therefore they will hear the instructions in that case. But in every other case, we just totally ignore it. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And if you've got any questions, please let me know. That was Marie's today. Thank you for watching. Bye.